winds up the Ziggy Zaglin show for this week, friends. You've been a wonderful audience. You really have. And in all humility, I'm hoping you'll want to be with me again next week. So until then, I say goodbye, au revoir, and God bless you all. You ever wonder what it's like to be the coast-to-coast -coast idol of 75 million viewers? Ziggy Zaglin should be able to tell you. That wasn't a stool he was sitting on. It's a pedestal, one thousand foot high. It's a long, long way to fall for Ziggy. And sooner or later, you probably will. Excuse me. Hello, I'm Ralph Damien, Ziggy's producer. Oh, come in. I've just been watching the show. Yeah, is the Ziggy sensational? Very. Well, you thought about it? Yes. And the answer is no. What? Nobody turns down a guest spot on the Ziggy Zaglin show. I just did. I'm afraid I gave up the song and dance routine a long time ago. What do you mean routine? We want you on the show just as you are. The one and only, unique, unbeatable, famous Simon Tepler. <laughs> You get him in here. Darling, nobody noticed. Get him in here. He could have blown the act. He didn't. Nobody noticed. Now, will you calm down, sit down, have a drink, relax? I got the press outside. Press? Look, I've just done a show. What's the matter with you? Texas mother of the year, remember? Oh, what am I supposed to do? Kiss her hand? Oh, come on, Ziggy. It's only five minutes. Well, the Texas mother of the year, two minutes. You understand? That's all. OK, but smile. Okay, boys, you can come in now. Well, you couldn't possibly be anybody's mother. You're too young. Oh. Mrs. Anderson, Ziggy's just been dying to meet you. Oh, Mr. Zaglin. Why, you must have very, very lucky children. Oh. Why, thank you. You know, the love of a mother is the most precious thing in the world. I know, I had a wonderful mother. What do you mean, had? Yes, had. She died last month. Oh, how awful. Uh, Ziggy, uh, could you put your arm around Mrs. Anderson, please? Fine. OK, boys, that's it. Ziggy's uh, just on a show. <laughs> oh, it's all so exciting. One more. Hold it. <laughs> but I could never stand to be in the limelight all the time. Well, it's a harsh light, Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> and you must never blink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Ziggy. No, 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 come right in. This is my agent, Ted Coblin. How do you do? <laughs> I just don't know what I'd do without him. My right arm. <laughs> this here's Rudy. Come on, Rudy. <laughs> He's key man behind the scenes. <laughs> we generally go over the routines after the show. I'm sorry about the hats, Mr. Zaglin, but as I explained to Mr. Coblin... Well, you think nothing of it, boy. We all make mistakes. I do more than most people. <laughs> no. I get to see it, Ziggy. Oh, 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 that's it, boys. Oh, uh, well. Could I have a signed photograph? Well, it's all here, Mr. Zaglin. Right oh. Thanks a lot, Ziggy. Thank you very much, Ziggy. Fine. Great. Thank you. Oh, how can I ever thank you enough, Ziggy? Well, I just love meeting you, Mrs. Anderson. I really do. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid old cow. In and out in a minute, 40 flat. How about the hat, Ziggy? Uh, Rudy wasn't told the brim should be turned down. You're fired. Look, Mr. Zaglin, it wasn't my fault. Fired. Finished. End of titles. Get out. That'll teach him. Ziggy, why don't you let Ralph do your firing for you? Yeah, let him take the rap of the union. He's the producer. It's my show and I call the shots. Who comes and who goes? And that includes you too, Coblin. Sure, Ziggy, I was just trying to help. Oh, uh, don't schmooze me, boy. We are in one of our sunniest moods today. And that goes for you two, Lois, twice. Twice? I'm honored. Oh, who died? 
Oh, that was quick. Did you clinch the deal with Templer? Nope. Why, he turned you down? Flat. Well, did you tell him what it pays? Sure. He didn't bat an eyelid. What, the saint turns down 5,000 bucks for three minutes' work? That's right. Well, not on my show, he doesn't. Now, you get back there, Damien. You give him a real sales pitch. Look, it's no use. He's not interested. I want him. You get him. Don't you think Mr. Templer might find me more uh, convincing? He's all yours. You just remember one thing. Yeah? You get Templer on my show next week, or don't come in tomorrow. Oh, Ziggy, be reasonable. I don't have to be reasonable. And you know why? I'm the star. The Ziggy Zaglin show is me. All alone, me. The rest of you are a bunch of hangers on, replaceable as a pair of shoes. Now, get out. must be in the wrong room. No. You're collecting for the Salvation Army. No. I'm Texas Mother of the Year. It's a happy thought. Adopt me. Thank you. Here's to your new and happy childhood. Delicious. It should be at 10 bucks a bottle. All right, why? Well, to be perfectly honest... Now, let's not spoil things. I, uh, want something. Haymate or playmate? Neither. A husband, perhaps? Doesn't every single girl? Right, now we have established one thing. You're unmarried. Who are you, Miss... Uh... Lois Neroy. I work for Ziggy Zagra. That's your problem, I'm afraid. I gather you don't like him. I don't know him. But you know his show. Yes, I saw it tonight. I had an hour to kill. I must say he was very successful in murdering it. Well, he wants you to be the guest on his next show. Such hospitality. Uh, I've been sent as a sort of emissary to change you from a rat fink into a mouse fink, sort of uh, lower your resistance. I'm uh, forced to admit things are improving. You're far more attractive than the last emissary, uh, Mr. Damien. Any calls? Uh, no, Mr. Zagan. Hey, do I hear typing? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Paul's typing in the study. Ah, thanks, Joe. Well, uh, help yourself to a drink. Thanks, Mr. Same for me, huh? Hmm. Paul, what are you doing here? The rewrites for next week's show. I wanted to get it finished tonight. Ah, the only loyal guy in the outfit, my brother. Let's not get too fraternal. Hmm? Something bugging you? I never felt happier in my life. I'm quitting. And You're now, what? I am quitting, Ziggy. This is my last friend. script. You're not serious. Oh, I was never more serious in my life. Zaglan. Paul, listen. You promised Mother you'd stick by me. You'll leave Mother out of this. You're not talking to the great American public now. She died thinking that her boy was God's gift to this country. Okay. Well, she's gone now. And I can get you off my back. Paul! Paul! Paul, wait! What's the matter? Nothing. At least not with me. I've just written my last script for the Ziggy Zagman show. I'm quitting. You're kidding. What are you talking about? Well, what's the matter with you all of a sudden? You want me to lay it on the line? Okay, I will. I've had you, Ziggy, right to here. You're a big, phony, no-talent, foul-mouthed lump of lard. You can't do this, Paul. Who's to stop me? I'll stop you. You? I haven't got the guts. You're a poor, frightened slob my brother kicks around. He wipes his feet all over you, and what do you do? You lick the laces. You walk out on me and I'll fix it. You never work in this business again. I'm sorry, brother dear. I just signed to write three pictures for 30,000 each. I'm flying to the coast tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. We'll sue you. For what? Breach of contract. I'd advise against it. I'll bet you would. Don't take my advice. Ask Ziggy. We can have you for every penny you've got. Go ahead. 
I'll put that in the book, too. Book? What book? Oh, didn't I tell you? I'm going to write a book. My life with Ziggy from A to Z. I've talked it over with the publisher. It's already been accepted. Uh, wait a minute, Paul. I'm... It's all there, Ralph. And I mean all. But oh, cheer up, friends. It's not the end of the world. Come on, smile, like me. I'm the happiest guy in town. Ralph, this book, what does he mean? I'm not quite sure. He knows about Arlene McCleary. Yes, I know. This could crucify you, Ralph. Ted, stop him. We'll stop him. One dead man. Paul and Ziggy are only legally brothers. Paul was adopted, and then the parents found out they could have a child of their own. Ziggy? Yeah. Paul's always looked after him. He promised the mother he would. It's his way of paying her back for taking him out of an orphanage and giving him a real home. Paul sounds like a nice guy. He is a real nice guy. Loris, will Ziggy really fire you if I don't agree to appear on the show? Probably. Well, I can hardly see you unemployed, can I? You mean you'll do it? Well, let's say I'll talk to Ziggy. Oh, you're marvelous. Yes. Well, uh, do you think you could meet me tomorrow at Paul's, say, around 10? He lives on Long Island. We could discuss the script, and then you could meet Ziggy. He lives just down the road from Paul. I left Ziggy's in rather a hurry tonight. I forgot to ask him whether he got the saint for the guest spot next week. Uh, the sketch is written anyway, so if you find any trouble with... You're Paul Zaglin? That's right. Who are you? What do you want? Can I have a drink? Sure, help yourself. Don't you think you better tell me what this is all about? I'm Arlene McCleary's brother. Oh, I see. Artist. Genius. Designer of book jackets. And you don't see. At all. It was a terrible tragedy. She was only 18, Mr. Zeglin. I brought her up. She was like a, like a, well, you describe her. You're a writer. She was lovely. Good. And you and your rotten brother murdered her. That's not true. Maybe legally, but morally that TV crowd of yours killed her. You hypnotized her. Your corny glamor, the money, Mr. McCleary, I know how you feel. You're going to write a book about it, aren't you? I heard about it from a publisher friend of mine. You're going to drag Arlene's name through the mud, aren't you? No. Liar. On my word of honor, Arlene's name won't be mentioned. I know. Because I'm going to kill you. <laughs>
about him? He's dead. Where? On the terrace. He's hanged himself. seconds before you arrived. I work for both of them, Paul and Ziggy. Oh, this will shatter Ziggy. He'll collapse. How far away is he? Just a few minutes down the road. Come on. You better go and tell Ziggy. I'll call the police. Police department, quickly. Lois, I left Ziggy's in rather a hurry tonight. I forgot to ask him whether he got the saint. Lois, please tell me it's not true. I'm sorry, Ziggy. But why? Why did he do it? I don't know. He had everything to live for. The scandal. I can just see the headlines now. Ziggy Zaglan's brother, a suicide. Very embarrassing. Hanging, it's so grotesque. If it was a gun or something, we could make it look like an accident. Oh, uh, you better phone Coblin and Damien in town. Tell them to get over here right away. We've got to think of something to tell the press. Okay, I'll call them. Who's over at Paul's now? Simon Templer. He's called the police. They'll want to talk to you. I don't want to go over there. I just can't stand the sight of death. Captain Williams, all I did was take the body down. You had no right to touch him. I know you by reputation, Mr. Templer. You love headlines. Cheer up, Captain. You'll get your name on the small print. It all seems pretty straightforward. Death was due to hanging. Any other injuries? I'll ask the questions, Templer. Of course. Were there any other injuries? Bruise on the jaw. You mean somebody hit him? I don't think so. More likely due to rope abrasion. Now, how about the time of death? Well, I'd estimate it between midnight, 1 a.m. Well, write up your report let me have it. Uh, doctor, is there any chance that he was throttled first and then strung up there? Well, not unless he was garroted by the same rope. Death was definitely due to strangulation. Uh, his neck wasn't broken? No. What are you getting at? Nothing at all. Just asking a few innocent questions. Have you any reason at all to think Paul Zaglin was murdered? No. Nope. He tied a rope around his neck and jumped off a ladder, suicide by hanging. You're clairvoyant. Thanks, Dr. Kent. Now listen here, Templar. I've heard about the way you act. You want to be in Ziggy Zaglin's show? Fine. Stay on your head, do tricks, whatever you like. But don't try to build up an obvious suicide into a murder mystery just for some cheap personal publicity. Captain, you cut me to the quick. Shall I introduce you, or would you care to find out their names by clever deduction? Who are you? Uh, I'm Ted Coblin. This is Lois Norroy and Ralph Damien. We work with Paul and Ziggy's show. Well, my name is Williams, Captain of Detectors. I'd like to talk to you one at a time. For you first, the rest of you, out. Oh, by the way, uh, including you, out. Certainly, Captain of Detectives. I only wanted to warn you. Anybody ever heard of Eileen McClear's brother? Who? Eileen McClear's brother. What are you talking about? Name me nothing? No. How about you, Coblin? No, uh, never. Uh, why? I just wondered. 
Tell me more about Paul. I knew he was a writer. What else? Well, he was a do-it-yourself fiend. Oh, yeah, he used to build his own furniture, you know, panel his study. Mm -hmm. He was better than most professional carpenters. <laughs> he made that. Yeah, it wasn't until it was finished he realized how much it looked like an old-fashioned gallows. A careful, precise worker, in other words. Very. Was he depressed? No, quite the reverse. Oh? Well, he just signed to do three films. You knew he was quitting? Yeah, he told me yesterday morning. He didn't want to tell Ziggy because he didn't want to upset him on the day of the show. So he was happy. He was delighted. The other boat. No, but he often sailed Ziggy's. Uh, where does Ziggy keep his boat? Just down the road in the yacht basin. What's the name of it? The Zigzag. I'll go down and take a look at it. something? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am. The other end of this? I don't know what you're talking about. All I know is I've lost a top writer. I'm a bit short of ideas for the show. Oh, you're looking for ideas here? Now, we all went out sailing a couple of weeks ago. Paul made a lot of notes that were left on board. How long are you producing, you sure? Since it started. Did you enjoy it? Ah. No, I hate it. Meaning you hate Ziggy. From head to toe, every revolting inch. Why? Because he lacks every imaginable asset of looks, wit, charm, and talent. He's a freak. A freak that hits the public once in a generation like an epidemic. The viewers don't think so. Yeah, well, the viewers don't see him off camera. He's made my life a living hell for eight long years. Why don't you uh, quit? You know, I don't really have to answer that question. But... I pick up $3,000 every Friday. I'm not going to speculate on Paul's reasons for doing what he did. I sit on the stool here. Let the people who don't really care have a field day with their guesses and gossip. An artist's private life should be his own. And after he delivers his script or walks off the stage, the world should let him alone. Well, why don't you... Uh choke up here so you can't go on. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> the world should let him alone. Paul's life was his own. If he chose to finish the script where he did, we have no right to ask why. Not bad. I'm in tears myself. Very funny, Ziggy. Good to see you, Saint. Have a drink. Bourbon and water. The first one, you're a guest. After that, it's every man for himself. Ah, nice to have you aboard. Thank you. I suppose you're a bit shocked, eh, Tepler? 
Should I be? No, no. Ziggy's comments on Paul's death have to be rehearsed like anything else on the show. Well, there's always room for last-minute script revisions, though. Well, what do you mean? To put in the name of Paul's killer. What do you mean? <laughs> Wait what a minute. Crash? Shut up! You mind explaining that remark? Quite simply, Captain Williams says it's suicide. I say it's murder. Oh? Have you anyone in mind? Yes. You three, for example. He's manic <laughs> with hallucinations. <laughs> Paul was killed between midnight and one. Where were you? Well, I don't know that I should tell you, but I will. I worked in the study till about 1.30, typing most of the time. Well, Joe heard me, didn't you? Yes, sir. Then I went to bed. How about you, Damien? Hmm? Oh, Cobbler and I left here at 11.10, sharp. You're very specific. Mm -hmm. I want to catch Annie Ross at the Caribbean on 53rd Street. She's on at 12.15. Oh, so you were both in New York around midnight. That's right. How was she? Annie? Fabulous. We want her on the show. And now, if you're through with this nonsense, Mr. Templer, I have some work to do. Damien? Yeah. You too, Ross. I'll be at Paul's house if you want me. Get lost, Joe. Joe, I think what he means is, would you be kind enough to excuse us? Oh, I know what he means, Mr. Templer. <laughs> You're uh, stirring up an awful lot of trouble for us. It's my nature. Have you really got anything to go on? Quite a lot. Such as? Oh, I gather that Paul was as happy as a lark last night. He was through with a job he hated after years with Ziggy. He was finally beginning to live. Oh, you mean uh, no motive? Or well, not for suicide. Unfortunately for Paul, he was writing a book. Who told you that? An expose on Ziggy. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Now, of course, he won't be finishing the book. Much to everybody's relief. That was the motive for murder. That holds for you, for Ziggy, Damien, even for Lois. And, of course, Ali McCleary's brother. You have heard of him? Yeah, I've heard of him. You know where he lives? I think he's in uh, Europe. You think? Listen, Templar. Ziggy's a big investment for me. As his agent, I get 10% of his gross income. Last year, he made over a million bucks. Don't you people think of anything else but money? We've had everything else. Now, look. We're paying you $5,000 for the guest spot next week. Oh, I haven't agreed to do it yet. Suppose I made it... Uh, 20,000, provided you leave well enough alone. Please don't stand too close to me, Coblin. I have a delicate stomach. I wouldn't do that. Mr. Templer. 897 East 86th Street. Arlene McClary's brother. All I'm saying is I don't like a sketch that burlesques the minister. Okay, you think of something. You're supposed to be the producer. Hey, what if we... Yeah? No, we couldn't do that either. Thank you. Ziggy, why don't we take a break? Because we've got a show to do. Because I'm the one who has to stand up in front of all the cameras and... All right. Yeah, come on. Let's go down to the Cranmore and have a drink, huh? Yeah, the air will do us good. Not you, baby. While we're gone, you transcribe this. We'll be back in an hour. God, what I do to amuse the great American public. 
The sacrifice is the strain. You're a strong man, Ziggy, as well as a genius. I know. But it's a terribly lonely life. It's a lovely life. Templar's not going to spoil it. I know Ziggy's ruthless and cruel. He'd do anything to stay on top. But I just can't believe he'd do anything to hurt Paul, ever. Where'd you get this? On Ziggy's desk. And typewriter recorded. Yeah. So, to all intents and purposes, he could have been sitting in his study typing. Nipped over here, called Paul, nipped back again. Say, in 15 minutes, and Joe would swear he'd never left the house. Yeah, but why? Paul was uh, writing a book about Ziggy. A biography? No, oh, an expose. The seamy side of Ziggy's life. I don't believe it. Why not? Paul never had much use for Ziggy, but he'd never deliberately hurt him. You still haven't heard of Arlene McCleary? No, you keep on mentioning her name, but I've never heard of her. Who is she? She's dead. Yeah, but how does she tie up with Ziggy? We're gonna drive to New York and find out. I'm going to drop you off at the Caribbean Club. I want you to find out what time Annie Ross did her show last night and whether Damon and Coblin were really there. And meet me at my hotel at six. Okay. What are you going to do? Check up on the elusive Arlene McClear, his brother. sister and Paul Zaglin's murder. I had nothing to do with it. You saw Paul last night. Yeah? Why? To beg? For what? Mercy? For your sister? You know about the book. Drink? No, thanks. She was just a kid. Not even 18. I brought her up. She was very beautiful. She was an innocent. You know what I mean? She was studying singing. Opera. We needed cash and... She did a commercial on the Ziggy Zaglin show. Ziggy spotted her and that was it. What happened? Total corruption. Moral 
physical, mental. The money, the high living, the phony glamour, the constant drinking. Ziggy dazzled her. And she became his mistress. One night, he threw a party on a beach. And the next morning, Arlene was found lying in the sand, face down. Drowned? Oh, sure, she was drowned. I mean, that was the official verdict. What's yours? Arlene could swim like a dolphin. It was her one sport. She won cups. But I accepted it. Put the rotten part out of my mind till I heard about Paul's book. You were afraid of a scandal? I was afraid that Paul would tell the world what she was really like. Cheap, degraded, promiscuous. What happened last night? I asked him to leave her out of the book. And? He promised me her name wouldn't be mentioned. He did? Yeah, I didn't believe him. I had a bit to drink. I hit him. He fell down. I heard a car in the driveway. I panicked, I guess. Ran out, came back here. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him, I swear it. I'm a police officer. Are you James Randall McCleary? Yeah. I'd like to ask you a few questions. My, Mr. Templer, but you get around, don't you? I try. What are you doing here? I'm visiting a friend. I'm surprised you have any. Well, life's full of surprises, isn't it? Mr. McCleary, were you out on Long Island last night? Yeah. Did you visit Paul Zeigman between midnight and 1 a.m.? You don't have to answer those questions. Keep quiet, or I'll hand him his case on a platter. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? It's a setup. <laughs> they were listening outside. You tipped them off. Mr. Templer had nothing to do with my being here. As a matter of interest, Captain Williams. Who did? Well, that's my business, and you intend to mind it. You do the same with yours, Templar, or you'll be put someplace where you can't interfere. Mr. McCleary, you're under arrest. I didn't kill him. I swear it. I know you didn't. And I'm going to prove it. About Paul Lewis. What made him do it? We don't know. That's life, I guess. Jack, were Ralph Damien and Ted Coblin here last night? Uh, sure, baby. I had a drink with them. What time? Oh, from 12.15 to well after two. Excuse me, yes? He's still creating about using these tin dancers. Can you come down and sort it out? All right, I'll come right. down. Sorry, baby. Chef trouble. They're worse than opera singers. I'll be right back. Take your time. Lewis! Hello, Annie. Oh, darling, how are you? It's been ages. Mm. Listen, I understand that uh, Ted Coblin and Ralph Damien were in last night. Well, didn't you see them? No, darling, I didn't go on. What do you mean? Oh, I felt vile last night. You know, oysters. You mean you weren't on? No show? Darling, without me, how could there be a show? <laughs> You mean she just walked out without saying anything? Uh, yes, sir. Well, did you see her leave? Uh, no, sir. I was in the kitchen. Oh, where the devil would she go? Well, it's not like Lois to just walk out. Uh, she's not at Paul's. Okay. Look, the study's been searched. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Drawers are out of the desk, tape strewn all over the place. What are we going to do? What do you think? Hello? It's Lois. I'm sorry if you've been worried, but something came up. I'm on my way back now. I know who killed Paul. Simon Templer says he knows who killed Paul. Yeah, he's with me now. We're both leaving right away. But who, Lois? Who? All right. But hurry. She says that Templer knows who killed Paul. 
Who? He won't tell her. Where are they now? They're leaving New York right now. I don't want to know. I don't want to know any unpleasantness. Yeah, except when you make it. Well, it's your job to protect me, both of you. I've got to be sheltered, otherwise I can't work. We'll protect you, Ziggy. If we don't, what do we got left? until Captain Williams get here as fast as he can. Okay. This dance routine is too long. It's too long! I don't like it anyway. We'll have to cut it. What the devil are you doing here? Where's Lois? Oh, she's uh, resigned. What? Don't worry, Ziggy. Where you're going, you won't need a girlfriend. You know what this is. It's one hour of typewriter music. Your alibi blown wide open. Damien, Coblin. Claire's too. What's the matter with him? He's nuts. Name one song that Annie Ross sang last night. Just one. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> we were a bit high. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't there. Call the manager up and ask him. Oh, they've already set that up. But Annie Ross didn't go on last night. She was ill. Is this true? Why don't you call up Annie and ask her? Why are you lying? Because one of them killed Paul. This is getting delightfully libelous. Then sue me. What's he talking about? Were you at the Caribbean last night or not? Look, he's making this up out of nothing. I'll tell you one more thing about your brother, Ziggy. He was a very neat person. He liked everything just right. Now, he must have become awfully clumsy at the last moment if he couldn't think of a better way of killing himself than to step off the bottom rung of a ladder and choke slowly and miserably to death. Now, if he had leapt from the top, He'd have done it fast. A quick, clean, broken neck. Say, this is crazy. Paul's larynx was ruptured. I spoke to the medical examiner. They did a pro forma autopsy this morning. Paul died of strangulation. Choked. By hand. Which one of you was it? Don't be crazy, Ziggy. Paul had to be silenced. He was going to write the truth about Eileen McCleary. I was against that right from the beginning, wasn't I? You two planned it. Shut up! That's just what he wants. You did it! But it was your party. And your boat. But you did it. You threw her overboard. Shh. She was drunk. She fell down the stairs. When we got to her, she was dead. Oh, it was a pretty wild party. To avoid a scandal, they took the body out in the boat to make it look like drowning. See, you are be certified. You're in this as much as we are. One of you two killed Paul! Exactly. McCleary was with Paul last night, begging him not to write the book. Paul said no, so McCleary hit him, knocked him out. And someone else came over, strangled Paul and strung him up on his own gallows. <laughs> this is idiocy. McCleary's been arrested. How did you know? Well, it only happened an hour ago. I saw him. How did you know? Because you tipped off the police. Next question. How did you know McCleary was there at all last night? I don't have to answer your stupid questions. Of course you don't. So I'll answer them for you. You were there, you saw McCleary, you saw him hit Paul and then leave. You went in, found Paul unconscious, so you strangled him with curtain cord. Then you went down to Ziggy's boat to get some rope. You did it. Yes, for you. To protect the goose that lays the golden eggs. We're making a fortune, all of us. And you two had to spoil it, you stupid, gutless little jerks. I 
right, Copeland. Get him up on his feet. Captain Williams wants a word with a pair of you. I shut my eyes to things. I didn't want the tails. Just to be protected like a butterfly in a cocoon. I'm gonna change. From now on, sweetness to everybody. Five minutes, Mr. Zagler. Now, you listen here, Junior. You hand me those hats on cue, or I'll cut your head off and send it home to your mother, you understand? Yes, sir. Get going. Now, ladies yes. and gentlemen, the man you've all been waiting for, Ziggy Zaglin. Right, it's better that way. Ironic, isn't it? Paul wasn't even going to mention Eileen McCleary in his book. What about that typewriter tape on Ziggy's desk? Oh, Damien planned to that to cast suspicion on Ziggy should the occasion arise. Simon, you were convinced that Paul was murdered from the start. What made you so sure? Well, he was uh, walking on cloud nine. He was thrilled and happy. There's one thing I know about human nature, Lois. It's that there is no such thing as a happy suicide. <laughs>